Hey friends, it's Katie, and this is going to be my December roundup, or December mashup, or just show and tell for grown-ups. Things that I did in December and things that I received in December. So here we go. Uh, so to start off, for three weekends in December, um, I got to uh, read tarot I'm going to say semi-professionally, I read tarot for money, first of all, which is a big step for me because this is one of my big goals in 2018 is to push my love of tarot from just a hobby into something, you know, semi-professionally on the side, kind of a side gig. Uh, so I, um, so I was able to read, um, at some all day events. And uh, one weekend in particular was very busy. I, I read for nine hours straight. And when I say straight, I literally didn't get a break the entire time. Now that's my fault, I know. But it, people were just lined up because they love tarot and um, they just wanted the experience. And I think they hadn't really had the opportunity. Um, and also where I live in Central California, um, I'm pretty sure I might be the only gig in town, which kind of means I'm a little bit excited for 2018. So, so yeah, I, I literally, um, I think I ate two Ritz crackers and maybe went to the bathroom once the entire time. Now I drank a lot of water. I used a lot of chapstick. Um, and just kept right on trucking because I really had fun and I really enjoyed it. It was super rewarding um, and just really a great experience for me to, you know, get some practice and um, set the tone for what I want to do in 2018. So off to a rock and start. So connected to that, I did a short video on um, what I took in my bag with me since I was, you know, going to these events a couple of weekends. I, um, like got really good at like just packing a bag for an indoor event and what I brought and it actually worked out pretty good. So I know that it's not going to be a comprehensive. Um, so I know that it's not going to be a complete list of, you know, what you might need for an event, but um, I'll post that video soon as well. And um, we'll have a discussion about what's in your bag. Um, let's see. I've been, I've been really working hard at reaching out like into my community to um, meet other like-minded people um, to just, you know, um, well, I moved to California, you know, from Seattle. And so I don't know anybody. And so I have really had to, you know, make a concerted effort to get out in my community and meet people. And uh, so I joined a couple of meetups. And um, so I attended a, um, Vedic astrology meetup that's been really interesting and it's been really helping me a lot with um you know getting more comfortable with the uh, astrology side of um you know how we're working with this planner and so this is also one of my December acquisitions is um Benabel Wen's metaphysical um planner so I'm definitely using this on a daily basis because I'm um learning astrology and also like working pretty closely on a daily basis with the um, lunar cycles. So anyway, so yeah, so I joined a Vedic astrology meetup and a meditation meetup a couple of nights a week. And, um, you know, can I meditate at home? Of course I can. And I do, but it's kind of nice to sometimes mm, hold myself accountable by actually getting in my car and going somewhere and, you know, having like consciousness discussions with other people and, you know, discussing meditation. So it's more of an accountability thing. And then just being in the presence of other people that like to, you know, talk about that stuff. It's kind of fun. So it's kind of what I'm doing with my time and also, um, a lot of artwork and, uh, working on tarot. I, I won't say that I've fallen off the wagon with art at all. It's just, I feel a little bit out of balance. I've been working so hard at, um, you know, trying to figure out what I want to do with, you know, pushing tarot forward a little bit. And, and I have like a equal love of art and tarot. I really can't say that one weighs heavily over the other, but um, I feel slightly out of balance right now. It like, as if I'm working so much on just tarot and tarot studies and um, thinking about, you know, tarot as a side hustle next year that I've, um, you know, push my art to the side a little bit. And so that's part of my big push for the new year is just um, definitely making art a bigger priority. And and I think for me, because I'm, like, I'm a Virgo, which means that I am often like driven to be in the service of other people, I will usually put 
other people's needs before my own. So um, I need to schedule artwork into my calendar, like literally put it in my calendar, big chunks of time, and then make sure that, um, you know, nothing encroaches on it. And that's my problem, nobody else's problem. Okay, so some fun things that I picked up this month. Um, I have several of these little boxes. Uh, these are actually business cards, but the reason that I wanted to show you, because I know it's not that exciting, this is from um, moo.com. I don't know if you can see it. Not sure if you can see a um, little box that it comes in, but it's so cute. So moo.com does really wonderful. I'm going to turn it around here. Um, does amazing business cards, really lovely quality. So these are mini cards and look how cute. Look how cute they are. I don't know if you can see, where should I put these? So they come in, these are mini cards and they come in these little boxes, but here's the great thing about Moo, um, for like no extra charge, you can put as many images on your cards as you want. And so when you're an artist, this is really helpful. So here I'll just show you. So I put like a ton of my little girl faces on my cards. Oh, that way. Nope. There. She's cute. And so like a lot of times what I do with these is um, when I take them places for people, I'll just like hand a whole bunch of cards or I'll just let people pick their own card and they always seem to like that. So that's a funny little thing. Super cute. So mini cards and they're pretty affordable and there are cheaper ways to do cards for sure. But like if you're an artist, um, it feels like, you know, your business cards showing your art are, are like what people are going to see. Um, and so now these are the regular size business cards and this is really cute. Look at this. Look at the little box and everything. It's like, <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of feels like, you know, if we're card junkies, like we are, I, I'm completely in love with, um, look at this. It's like my own little deck of cards, even though it's not <laughs> anyway, but this is a nice way to just, um, you know, like showcase, you know, art, if that's for me, it's art stuff. Um, and here's something else that's interesting that, see, I feel pretty comfortable, you know, with my art for me. It's just, I like my art and I don't really care whether anyone else likes it or doesn't like it. Cause I make my art for, you know, mostly for me, but here's a funny thing that happens with, um, in both art and I would say even with tarot and it's related to the imposter syndrome. If you've heard of the imposter syndrome, it's basically the idea that, you know, we feel, um, you know, inadequate or insecure in, in the idea of calling ourselves a title of, you know, an artist or a tarot card reader. And, and that, and, um, that flows like into tarot cards be simply because, you know, it's a, a non-regulated, um, Oh, I don't know, you know, vocation or industry, if that makes sense. And so just like when I was struggling to figure out, you know, do I call myself an artist? Um, one of the things they recommended was, you know, make your own business cards, make your own website. If you say it is, then it is. And that's pretty much the way it is. There, there's, I didn't go to school for art. I just make art and I like it and I'm okay with that. Um, but I'm going through the same problem with um, tarot cards that I was with like my art. It took me a couple of years to just kind of gain the confidence to kind of be okay with when you meet people saying, you know, yeah, I'm an artist or, oh, what do you do? Well, oh, I read tarot cards. I, so I often say, well, I'm an artist by day and a tarot nerd by night. Um, Cause I do tarot on the side. And I do both of them on the side cause I'm not doing anything full time right now. But Anyway, it's just a funny thing. So business cards, it, this was something of a milestone for me um, in getting business cards. It, it just one day I decided, you know, I'm going to make business cards. I'm going to make a website and I'm just going to start calling myself an artist and I'm going to start introducing myself as an artist and see where it goes. And you know what? Nobody ever questions you. Nobody ever challenges you and says, oh, really? Hmm, what makes you an artist? It's like, oh, okay, great. You're an artist. Awesome. So you know what? That's actually part of my plan for 2018. <laughs> How do I know I'm a tarot card reader? Because I say I am. Because I say I am and I got the business cards. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, nobody really seems to be bothered by it. 
Um, and so that's kind of why I'm trying to, you know, read at all day events and things too, is to really get the experience and just, it's making myself feel more comfortable and confident that, that I can actually do what I say I can do. So it's coming together just fine. It's just, it's a process. And, and now that I know, I already know what it was like going through it, um, you know, with my art that I'm probably going to just go through the same, you know, the same process with tarot and it'll, it'll come to me eventually, you know, just time and experience are going to go a long way. So anyway, I don't remember I've shown this before. Uh, I picked up Moonology actually a little while ago, but this, um, this is one of the best books. I think if for anyone interested in working with like the lunar cycles, just basic working with the lunar cycle, this is awesome. Um, and I would recommend getting it in um, paperback versus like the Kindle edition, or you can do both, but it, there's, it's something of a reference book that you'll want to look at um, over and over with, you know, charts and references and things. So I feel like the paper version is, um, and uh, here's something, so here's something in particular that I like. Um, okay, so something that I'm going to work on in 2018 is um, uh, being aware of the moon as it moves um, in as it moves daily into different signs. Now I know like lots of y'all have jobs and you don't have time for this. I under I realize that. So this is just what I want to do. But um, you know, the moon moves into a different sign every two to three days. And I just kind of want to be a little bit more um, connected to what that energy looks like every couple of days. And then can I capitalize on that to, um, you know, push some of my other endeavors a little forward. Um, so, at the end of the day, um, I, I just spent 20 years in Seattle where it rains as much as they say it does. Um, it's no joke. And I pretty much went 20 years without seeing the moon. And so now that I'm in California and it's sunny and I see the moon, I see the moon every single day or every single night. Um, and I love it. And I don't take it for granted. And I'm out there um, many, many nights. Uh, just kind of hanging out, enjoying that part. This last year, I felt very connected to the moon in a way that I hadn't for a long, long time. And I'm just really enjoying it. And so um, anyway, this book has been um, a great, so this book has been a great resource to just, uh, just to work with alongside that. So Moonology. Uh, this is one. Uh, so I got this one from the library. I'm thinking about buying it, but I don't know yet. Um, I, uh, let's see, I got this recommendation from Lisa at Tarot Alchemist. So, uh, Lisa is our tarot mom and she has great ideas. And so when Lisa speaks, I always listen. So Lisa recommended this book and I picked it up and I am enjoying it. So I'm going to do several spreads and then decide if I want to buy it or not. And I'll tell you, can I just tell you one of the cool things about, um, you know, loving tarot in the central Valley of California where it's a tad bit conservative. Sometimes it might be referred to as the Bible Belt of California, which means that um, nobody else is waiting for tarot books at the library. I pretty much have them all to myself. So uh, there's no waiting list. <laughs> Whatever I want, I get. So yeah, uh, so I picked up this one. And, um, you know, I am mostly okay with where I'm at with like my like chronic illness and chronic pain, but I'm always interested in just it, I'm more the integration of like acceptance versus trying to like heal or, mm, or like dispel, you know, disease, those kind of things. Um, I, I've been chronically ill for many, many, many years, and I'm finding that I am most at peace and most at ease when I can just kind of accept it and not really obsess over it and just kind of let it do its thing and it is what it is and just find coping skills. So, um, so that's kind of what I'm looking for here. So Tara for the healing heart. And the other library book that I got is, is Robert M. Place's uh, Tarot History, Symbolism, and Divination. And I think for sure I'm definitely going to buy this one because um, I also was able to get um, both the uh, Alchemical Tarot and the Sevenfold Mystery for a pretty screaming price. Um, these both of these decks were slightly under thirty dollars each, and I think they run about forty dollars right now. So um, 
I had to jump on it and they're not even opened yet, but I'm, so I'm going to, um, deep dive into that. But again, these, this is more like this satisfies my craving for, um, just, you know, study and learning and, and, uh, you know, deep diving into stuff that only other tarot nerds would appreciate that, you know, my friends and family don't give a shit about, but so this is a yes. Um, oh, and then, okay. And this is really kind of nerdy. I have, I have a couple of crystals. Let's see if I can find it. I have a couple of crystals. Um, my hubby got me a rock tumbler for my birthday. Here we go. My hubby got me a rock tumbler for my birthday several months ago. And so I've been experimenting with, um, tumbling my own stones. So these are not like super exciting. Um, these aren't super exciting. This one I think is real pretty though. It's this blue and this red, it's a Jasper with a quartz in it. And it's just very pretty. Let's see. Here's another one. <laughs> I'm just super pleased because it takes weeks to tumble rocks, y'all. It can take like a month. And so when you finally, when they finally come out, you get a little excited. Oh God. Oh, and there's the phone. My hubby's having surgery right now. And so I think he's out of surgery. I got to get in the car and go over and get him. So I didn't get to do my unboxing because I got something from Israel. It's the Saki Saki Tarot. I already know what it is, but I was super excited to open it because I haven't seen it either, but not today, unfortunately. So in another video, but uh, I'm going to cut this short, but thanks for hanging out with me today, friends, and I will uh, see you in another video. Bye for now.